Section 1.5, Elementary Matrices and a Method for Finding A Inverse. Matrices A and B are said to be row equivalent if either, hence each, can be obtained from the other by a sequence of elementary row operations. A matrix E is called an elementary matrix if it can be obtained from an identity matrix by performing a single elementary op row operation. Let's look at the uh, operations that produce the following elementary matrices. So for the first one, it looks like we took the second row of the identity matrix and we just multiplied it by negative three. So I'll say that um, we took the two by two identity, we took row two, and we set that equal to minus three times row two. Okay, how about for the second one, it looks like there should be a one over here and there should be a one over here. It looks like these just got swapped rows two and four. So I'll say that um, it's the four by four identity matrix as long as you take row two and swap it with row four. As for this third elementary matrix, it looks like we just have an extra three over here. So it probably came from, or definitely came from adding uh, three to this last row and or multiplying three by this last row and adding it to this. So we could just say that this is the three by three identity matrix where well, row one was replaced with row one plus three times row three. And last but not least, this is another three by three identity matrix that um, just had row well, actually, it's just the identity matrix for uh, the three by three. So we could just take any of the rows and just say that it's uh, one times its, uh, itself. And there you go. The identity matrix is trivially an elementary matrix. If the elementary matrix E results from performing a certain row operation on IM, and if A is an M by N matrix, then the product EA is the matrix that results when the same row operation is performed on A. So as an example, let's compute this uh, product EA. What we'll do is we'll take a matrix that uh, definitely doesn't look like an elementary matrix, and one that definitely does look like one, see how there's just uh, that three over there, and we'll compute the product. So we'll say that uh, EA, well, if we take each row E, multiply it by each column, because remember we're doing E then A, then it looks like we should get one, zero, two, three, two minus one, three, six, four, four, 10, 9, and if we look carefully at this, it looks like the first two rows are the same. The only difference is the last row, and notice this last row looks like they took three of this one first row and they added it to it. So if we took three of this and added it to that third row, notice you would get a four over here, you would get a four over here because it's zero on the top, and then six plus four will give you 10. And then uh, you just take uh, that last one over there, multiply by three at it, you get nine. So basically verified the theorem for this particular example. It's kind of cool that the product will actually preserve that um, elementary row operation that happened to the elementary matrix. What are the operations that produce the following elementary matrices, and what are the operations that restore them to the identity matrix? Okay, how about we start with uh, this first one. It looks like we should start with the um, two by two identity. So we'll start with one, zero, zero, one, and we'll take the second row and just multiply by seven, right? Row two should just be seven times row two. And then that'll give us one, zero, zero, seven. And then if we want to restore it, then we'll just take one seventh. All we have to do is divide by seven for that uh, row two. And then we'll get the identity back, one, zero, zero, one. 
Okay, how about for the second one? Well, the second one very close to the identity, but the one should be on the left on the top. It looks like they just swapped these rows. So how about we do that? One, zero, zero, one is what we'll start with. And then we'll just swap rows one and two. And then that'll leave us with zero, one, one, zero. If we want to get back, we just swap again. And we'll end up back at one, zero, zero, one. Okay, last but not least, we got a five over here. Probably came from multiplying this, adding it over there. So why don't we start with the identity? And then we'll take row one and set it equal to row one plus five of row two. And then that'll give us one, five, zero, one. To restore it, we'll just undo what we did. We'll set row one equal to row one um, minus five of row two or plus negative five times row two. And we'll get uh, the identity back. Okay, so every elementary matrix is invertible, and the inverse is also an elementary matrix. Uh, let's prove this real quick. If E is an elementary matrix, then E results by performing some row operation on the identity matrix. Let's let E0 or E0 be the matrix that results when the inverse of this operation is performed on I. Applying a theorem, previous theorem and using the fact that inverse row operations cancel the effect of each other, it follows that if we take E0 times E, we'll get the uh, identity. But we can always just reverse it, just like our previous example. So E times E0 must also be the identity. And thus the elementary matrix row uh, E0 is the inverse of E. It should make sense that we're able to just undo whatever previous operation we just did. So we should always be able to go back. OK, so we have some equivalent statements. If A is an n by n matrix, notice this is n by n, so it's square, same number of rows and columns, then the following statements are equivalent. That is that they're all either true or they're all false at the same time. So A is invertible. If A is invertible, that means that AX equals zero has only the trivial solution. That means that if you solve this equation, you see that uh, X has to be uh, zero, all zeros. It's the same as saying the reduced row echelon form of A is the identity. And it's the same as saying that A is expressible as a product of elementary matrices. So if one of these is true, they're all true. If one of them is false, they're all false. To find the inverse of an invertible matrix A, we can find a sequence of elementary row operations that reduces A to the identity, and then perform that same sequence of operations on the identity to obtain the uh, inverse matrix. Let's do an example of that. How about we try to find the inverse of uh, this matrix right over here? So what we'll do is we'll start with uh, recreating the matrix. One, two, three, two, five, three, one, zero, eight. And we'll adjoin the identity matrix, which in this case is one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. It's three by three. So I'll put a little line to show I'm adjoining it. And I want to try to make this look like the identity. And then the matrix that this becomes will be my inverse. So to get to the identity, how about I take, let's see, um, I want to get a zero over here where that two is. So how about I take two of the first row and subtract it from the second? In other words, I'll take row two and I'll set it equal to row two plus negative two times row one. Uh, I would also like to get a zero over there. So I'll set row three equal to row three plus uh, negative one times row one. That'll cancel out the two and the one. So I'll end up with uh, my first row repeated. So one, two, three, and uh, I'll keep the one, zero, zero. But then my second row, I lose the two, that's zero. Taking two times row one, so five minus four is one. 
2 times that is 4, and then 3 minus 2 times that, so that's negative 3. And then I also have to make sure that I uh, operate on the rest of my uh, columns, including for the identity. So uh, 0 minus 2 times that is minus 2, and then this stays 1, and this is 0. At the same time, I want to do my uh, third row, subtracting the first one. So I should get 0, minus 2, 5, minus 1, 0, and 1. And I'll just put that line to separate them a little bit. OK. Uh, next up, it looks like I have my leading 1 over there. That's great. But I would love to eliminate that negative 2. So how about I just add 2 of row 2 to the bottom row? So I'll take row 3, set it equal to row 3, plus 2 row 2. And I should get the top duplicated. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 3, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 5, 2, 1. All right, making good progress. Next up, I'll take row 3 and just make it negative. That way I get rid of that negative. So I'll set row 3 equal to minus row 3. End up with 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1 minus 3 minus 2 1 0 and 0 0 1 5 minus 2 minus 1 okay I'm almost there now I'm in row echelon form just to keep reducing it to get to reduce row echelon form so now that I've gotten uh, my leading ones and zeros underneath I want to get zeros above so how about we uh, let's try eliminating these guys. I'll take um, just 3 of row 3, add it to that. Negative 3 of row 3, add it to that. So I'll set row 2 to be row 2 plus 3 of row 3. And I'll set row 1 to be row 1 plus negative 3 of row 3. And I'll end up with 1, 2, 0, negative 14, 6, 3, 0, 1, 0, 13, negative 5, negative 3. And the last row we didn't touch, 0, 0, 1, 5, minus 2, minus 1. Okay, it looks like we just have uh, one more step. We need to get rid of that last two. Just take uh, two of row two. So I'll take row one and set it equal to row one plus negative two times row two. So I'll get the identity. Wonderful. And then minus 40, 16, 9. So the rest of this is just uh, on the left, the identity, and on the right, it's going to be my uh, inverse. Excellent. 0, 0, 1, 5, minus 2, minus 1. OK, so this means that we have uh, A inverse given as this matrix. I almost forgot my line. I don't really need it, though. And it's minus 40, 16, 9, 13, minus 5, minus 3, 5, minus 2, minus 1. Let's see if we can figure out if a matrix is invertible. We'll try to apply the same method. So we'll. Uh, Rewrite 1, 6, 4, 2, 4, minus 1, minus 1, 
to five, and then we'll write the identity matrix and we'll try to uh, convert the identity into our inverse. Okay, so let's uh, eliminate these two guys. So I'll subtract uh, two of row one from row two and I'll add row one to row three and I'll get one, six, four, and don't change the top, one, zero, zero, but my second row becomes zero, minus eight, minus nine, minus two, one, zero, and zero, eight, nine, one, zero, zero. Okay, I would like to get, oh, wait, there's a problem over here. If I take this row and I add it to the last one, I'm going to get a whole bunch of zeros. Here, I'll show you. I get one, six, four, one, zero, 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 minus eight, minus nine, minus two, one, zero. And at the bottom, I'll get zero, 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 minus one, one, one. Okay, so. A must not be invertible. If it was invertible, we would have been able to make it the identity, but you can't get the identity if you can't make that into a one. Okay, how about we use uh, theorem 1.5.3 to determine whether the given homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions. Okay. Let's take a look at the coefficient matrix over here. So we'll take one, two, three, and two, five, three, one, zero, eight. Oh, but we do that in example four. So that is invertible by example four. Okay. Since the uh, coefficient matrix is invertible, that means that we only have the trivial solution because this is equal to zero. When a x equals zero, when a is invertible, that means you only have the uh, trivial solution by that theorem. Okay, uh, let's look at this coefficient matrix. So we have one, six, four. We're just reading off each of these coefficients. 2, 4, minus 1, minus 1, 2, 5. Oh, well, we just did that in example 5. We just saw that that was not invertible. So that means that there are non-trivial solutions.